AI is taking over the world. I can take a picture of this guy playing Ming in EU4MP, load it into Discord, give a prompt for this generative AI, and then... Meep, meep. It's me, as the emperor of China in 15th century. Not really sure what you can do with this technology, but it exists. Anyways, in this multiple part series campaign, I play as Ming in EU4 multiplayer. I'm Absol Habibi, let's get into the good stuff. So, Ming in EU4 MP. Isn't that cursed? You start way higher development than anyone else in the game. Surely it's too overpowered. And if you're thinking that, then you are mostly correct. Which is why other EU4 MP mods do this to China. Or they do this. Social credit did. Ducted. But playing Ming isn't like other nations in the game. We have some limitations to our nation that we must follow. As Ming, we're not allowed to declare wars, guarantee AIs or players, warn players, make new tributes west of Ava, unless any two of our player tributes stop paying tribute. There was one exception to this rule, and that is if we started to fire the unguarded nomadic frontier disaster. And in that case, we're allowed to declare war on the nation that's causing the disaster. So it was now time to talk to our player tributes. Alright yeah. guys, so you guys know the rules. I can't join wars. I can't fight wars. Unless I get unleashed, okay? So unleashed means that you guys stop paying tribute. So to make this easier for everyone, and by the way, if you're in Asia right now, east of Ava, everyone east of Ava, you can become my tribute if you're interested, I'll give you protection from outside nations. Uh, also, if I do pass mandates later, you will get bonuses. It's like HRE. But um, to make this easier, I'll let you guys choose your tributes, what you're willing to spare. Okay. Not power. Most of our player tributes, unsurprisingly, chose Manpower as their choice of tribute. For our AI tributes, we chose Admin as tribute in order to reach Tech 5 Admin faster and start clearing ideas. And since Ming got a major update in the EU4 Domination DLC, we had a lot of game mechanics that we had to deal with inside the game. We do have a global modifier of plus 25 autonomy that we can remove through our mission tree, which is a new mission tree thanks to the Domination DLC. We're going to deal with rebels. We're going to have a wave of rebels now because we just decreased autonomy everywhere. And we need to stab up immediately. We actually need to stab up twice because we want to remove this guy as a ruler uh, since he's a 1-1-1 with Craven, and this guy's a 3-3-4, which is not bad. Um, I'm not doing it yet because I don't want to be negative stability. We're going to try to get 100 mandate and we're going to just sit out 100 mandate. I'm not going to pass any of the uh, decrees or reforms. Um, well, actually, decrees I will pass until I feel like I'm in a much safer position. So no reforms are going to be done. The reason why we don't pass reforms is because of the Chinese mandate mechanics, where every time we pass a celestial reform, we lose 70 mandate. And when below 50 mandate, we get major debuffs to our army and economy that players can use as an opening to declare on us and take us down. I actually want to go Colonial Ming. To be fair though, we removed exploration and expansion ideas how we know them. Uh, this is controversial amongst players, uh, you know, especially if you don't play MP. But we removed exploration ideas and expansion ideas and at tech 6 anyone can be colonial. This is just so you don't feel like you're forced and some nations like you can't go colonial because you know you have to take some mill idea group or take you know better idea groups to kind of stay there and then it leaves only like two nations Portugal and England able to just colonize freely because they are able to take exploration ideas on other people yes that does remove from the historicity of the Europeans colonizing but this is MP it's not really meant to be historical it's more meant to be fun I add my tributes, I have Malaka, I have Ayutthaya, I have Lenzang. Madia says that he will become a tribute once he wants to expand north, which I allow it if he becomes my tribute. Uh, DZ, Yunu, QQ, and then Warmonger, he says he wants to become my tribute. We don't know if it's true. Right now we need to get good events, because we can get a bunch of negative events that make things really hard. They're all paying their tributes. Oh, I maybe do, but I have no intention of that yet. 
Oh, yet. Okay. You have no intention of betraying me yet. Of course. Ah, well, that's great. Great news. Uh-huh. Very great. I love my liege. Until they get weak. <laughs> <laughs> our first priority was removing our global 25% minimum autonomy, which can be removed by doing the reform the administration decision, which requires one stability, 100 government reform progress, and either 50% crown lands owned, or our Unix estate to have a loyalty of 70 or greater. Once we have that, we lose 50 government reform progress and 2 stability, which makes the autonomy debuff reduced by 5% autonomy, which means we have to do this decision 5 times in order to go to a normal 0% minimum autonomy. In the meantime, it was time to start building up our cities. It will look real nice when it's done. A lot of our missions down here are about internal expanding, like here we need 15 temples, and Manchuria is now independent. Okay. All players around us were very cooperative, even Oirat who was fighting a player war against the Uzbek player. Except for Jin Zhao who had now formed Manchu. It was clear that Manchu did not want to be part of the Ming prosperity sphere and wanted to contest us on the field of battle. However, with everyone else cooperating with us, it would be extremely difficult for Manchu to be victorious. What is Manchu going to do? Well, my mandate is going back up, so... But, yeah, we're probably going to need more forts here. Um, yeah, we'll build a mountain fort here. Let's see if Manchu wants to become tribute. Let's see if he responds. Yeah, he rejected. This is a Japan player. Oh, the greatest under the heavens, the celestial lord himself, would you perhaps bestow upon the Japanese to conquest this righteous claims? Sure. I don't want any of my tributes to necessarily get stronger than me, right? So it's good to fund all sides, fund the weak, so no one gets overly too strong on my border. Uh, no map can be a work of art as long as your nation is on it, Manchu. Already making 112 ducat income. Nothing surprising here. We're Ming. Nomadic Frontier is going to fire, it seems. He doesn't want to become my tributes, but it's okay. Once it fires, I will declare war on Manchu. I am allowed to declare war on him. I'll declare war on him to make me make him my tribute. Actually, I might just take his land. I don't know. Last chance to become my tribute. They rejected. And with Manchu rejecting becoming my tribute, it meant that war was inevitable. Manchu was the one who striked first, taking military technology six ahead of time. A huge technology that gives infantry almost double the stats meaning we had to sit behind Beijing until we could take the tech as well. We were able to pass the boost the officer corps decree, giving us a small boost in infantry combat ability. Luckily, our mandate had recovered to above 50, so we had no military debuffs. But Manchu was a steppe nomad horde, which meant that he would do extra damage on flat terrain which Beijing was. We had to use our numbers to our advantage and hope to overwhelm the Manchu player. first battle was a victory to us, and the losses almost equal. It was now our turn to go on the offensive. All of my loyal subjects will get money for not joining this treacherous betrayer. In the next battle, Manchu cut our reinforcements in the province of Jusutu, removing our ability to reinforce the main battle, causing us to lose it. He then continued a push into Shenyang, but our army were in position and ready to reinforce stopping his offensive. Oh, that's so much men lost. He tried again in Chen Yang, but our numbers were simply too much for him. The numbers. Yeah, with alone and me with full mandate, I think this is pretty impossible for him. He's doing a lot of casualties though. We continued to press forward and eventually won the war. Manchu did truce break us afterwards, but it was pretty pointless and just led us to gaining more lands. As for your allegiance, continue paying tribute, and for not joining, here you go, Korea. As promised, we rewarded all of the players who did not join against us. 
In reality, as long as I had above 50 mandate and manpower at the start of the war, there should be no way for Manchu to win a 1 versus 1. Just one more player on his side, like Oirat or Korea, and I'd probably lose. Luckily for us, our diplomacy was too strong and Manchu was isolated. It was now time to start our colonial efforts, starting with the island of Taiwan. China will grow larger. We now passed our first lesser reform, civil registration, giving us 5% dev cost, minus 20% autonomy change cooldown, and giving all of our tributes 10% tax bonus. Date going up. Look at mandate going up, it's beautiful. One per month. Need to bestow gifts again. Nations around the world were hearing about the amazing monetary gains of being a Ming tribute and wanted to become our tribute as well. And it's time for another imperial gift. I can accept it in his name and I will forward yeah, it. Yeah, same. I can't see you guys. Uh, I would actually like an uh, institution if something. What? I receive gift. You receive 12 mil points every, every year. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a fair deal. They're all paying their tribute, actually. I thought they would betray me when Manchu did, but they didn't. Manchu? What about woman Chu? You stupid shit. <laughs> no. Sorry, I'm, I'm the one who's supposed to be sorry. Oh, our main day is going so fast. We can pass another reform soon. And slowly we're getting rid of this uh, average autonomy or the base autonomy. Just with time, you know, we've just been reforming the administration. It's costing us gov cap, so we've been at the second reform this entire time. But, you know, that's just Ming moment. Tame China's sorrow. Nice. More mandate. And we're back to positive mandate. It's by passing two reforms. This is going swimmingly. The next reform we passed was delegate the Zonggu, which gives us monthly autonomy change and all of our tributes state maintenance cost. Ming is in the new world. We're exploring it. This does generate a pretty funny alternate timeline where the first interaction between China and the Western Europeans could be through explorers seeing each other in the new world. We ended the first 42 years of the game with an income of 174 ducats, almost 110 ducats higher than the second highest income player. Beautiful. Main focus right now is to go through the mission tree because I was looking in single player and there's a lot of missions that we can actually do, such as this one. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. I'm gonna turn on some chill music and focus on completing missions. Unless we get attacked, which it's very likely that we get attacked from multiple sides. Here's the players that are left. There's a Burma, there's a Lanzang, there's a Oirat. Manchu's dead. There's a Korea, there's a Japan, and then all of these East Asian nations. Of course, once we're out of the first age, we have to be care careful not to fire Crisis of the Ming Dynasty. So we need to stay above 50 mandate at all times. At this point, we were also able to finally remove the overextended administration debuff. Now autonomy is fixed. Pog. The next reform we passed was introduce the Gategulio, which gives possible advisors plus one for all of our tributes. Right now we need to try to pass as many mandates as possible before we get to... Uh, this one because once we're in this age of discovery we can tick we can tick crisis of the Ming dynasty so we have to be very careful a message from the Pope has come in oh, great Emperor of China the conditions in Europe have been extremely hostile and we have been kicked out of Italy we are looking for new lands to migrate we humbly ask the Emperor if we somehow could migrate lands close to you and become your tribute under your great protection. If the Pope can reach Taiwan, he can move his capital here and therefore become my pup, my uh, tributary. I'll allow it. I will allow it. The next thing I wanted to do was harmonize the Shinto faith. Using the Confucian harmonization mechanic, we can get another 10% infantry combat ability using a Shinto province in our lands. You sell me one province temporarily for a thousand ducats so I can harmonize Shinto. Absolutely. Oh, Pog. Which province? Uh, whatever province. Need at least 20 development. I guess I'm deving this province, chat. In terms of mission tree progress, we're close to completing the outer city of Beijing mission, which will give a fort level and plus two goods produced in the province permanently. 
We also needed to upgrade the canals in the Zhejiang state in order to click the Jinghang Grand Canal mission, which will reduce flooding disasters and upgrade workshops in that area to counting houses. Start upgrading the canals, you need to upgrade each one individually. With the one province in Japan developed, we now began the Shimto harmonization process. Beijing plus two goods produced, nice. Also higher fort defense. Level 5 fort in Beijing, geez. Three stability, we can now click this one. Palace branch, mandate. Touring sensors. Oh, hand, what's that snake? The palace branch. After clicking that mission, we were now able to click the Grand Coordinator's mission, which gave us access to... We have Holy Orders! Pog, we have Holy Orders! We also, at this point, were generating an insane amount of mana. 15, 13, 13, not bad. The next reforms we passed were reformed the Saiban, which gave trade efficiency and diplomats, established the Lifan Yuan, which give us core cost and all of our tributes autonomy change cooldown, promote generals, which gives us yearly army tradition 0.5, and reform the army, which gives us movement speed and regiment drill loss and all of our tributes 0.2 yearly army professionalism need to do this it's a bit annoying that it's like in four provinces we need to spend so much money but hey stops disasters from happening so we need to do it i, I literally cannot int i'm these guys stop me from inting it's not possible it's funny that we can see their income oira is huge but is making an income of 24 ducats the guy needs a gift man Here, here's another gift dude this is blessed Ming Cascadia chat. Meanwhile, our tribute of Korea declared war on our tribute of Japan, getting naval dominance and being able to land in the south. Uh, so we can make our ruler a great engineer. Okay. We just got a bunch of... Uh, we, got a, we just got a bunch of... Okay, the, all of these now have counting houses. That's pretty nice. The war in Japan escalated further and Brunei joined on the side of Japan. I was secretly rooting for Japan since Korea had colonized Mexico. Dude, uh... Hmm... Korea's now in a 3v1 situation. Norway just attacked him. I will send a contingency force to the New World. Yes, I did want Korea to lose here. However, I needed to show my tributes that I would protect them against outside forces, which Norway obviously was. And that was important because I wanted my tributes to continue paying their tribute and not choose to team up on me and turn on me. The force we sent to Mexico though was a small one, not really meant to turn the war. Third war. But it seems uh, Japan has won here. Another mission completed. Number of allowed buildings plus one. What? Portugal is surpassing me, dude. Portugal is surpassing me. It's because it's colonies. It's bugged and it shows them as true development. But Portugal is surpassing me. A new contender, a Portuguese contender, dude. Yeah, I don't think there's any more mandates I can do. We'll see when I get enough. Any more celestial reforms. At this point, we had pretty much passed all the reforms that we could do. The other reforms that we couldn't do required things like 75 absolutism or a lot of crownland, which we didn't have since we were still selling, since it was still giving a lot of money. We can take this one. Other options wait until, uh, wait until absolutism. Now I need to get 45 crownland. Back in Mexico, Korea was losing to Norway and our contingency force wasn't really doing much. I guess we can grow from gaining provinces. Japan is selling us this island to gain money. I don't mind that, that's pretty good for me. Can divert more of this node. After many years, Shinto was finally harmonized. The interesting, this is an interesting Europe, dude. What is this? Tunis is alive, Andalusia is dead. Shanghai has got all this land here. What is this? And Teutonic Order is huge! So I got a player on my colony. On Alaska. Minkui. Colonial players have actually surpassed us. And Persia is actually quite strong as well. 
I got some pretty cheap provinces to dev. Fuyang. Let's see if it's in a province with a trade center. It is not. I'm about to ming all over the place, huh? dude. I feel it in my bones. It's about to get crazy, this session. It always gets crazy. <laughs> Time to make more money. The Pope was finally in range for us to sell him Taiwan. Now we all had to wait for him to core the province and then he can move his capital here and finally become a tribute of the great Ming. Meanwhile, a plot was brewing amongst our tributes. The nations of Siam, Korea, and Oirat were no longer paying them, meaning a war was most likely on the horizon. They did it! I'm unleashed! It's time for the Chinese parliament chat. Now we need to go around and make every single province a parliament. This is going to take a while. There's a parliament map mode? Okay. Min maxing, min max, max, mic, min max, min max, mic, max, min max, min max, min max, min max, min max. Is it min maxing or is it ming maxing? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That was a really bad one. I think that joke deserves me to delete my YouTube account. Bye, guys. I'll see you never. The plot to take us down was becoming apparent. Siam was no longer responding to my messages and Korea was getting subsidies from Portugal, my self-proclaimed number one enemy. You are getting aid from Portugal? We weren't going to idly sit by and wait for this coalition to get stronger. We were going to make the first move. Apparently, Concerto Grosso number 8 in G minor is technically copyrighted music. So this next part, I just have to commentate because in the video or in the stream, I started playing a playlist for 19th century villains scheming against his enemies because now my villain arc has begun. Our spies in Madias informed us of this plot being formed. Since Oirat was involved, we had to rebuild the Great Wall of China, as well as defend our southern border against Siam. Yes, Trump, I agree. Ted had to do a preemptive strike. We need to do a preemptive strike. We need to do a preemptive strike right now. Here we go, chat. Our suspicion was that Korea was the one that was forming the plot, so we declared war on them. However, Oirat was waiting and prepared in the north side of Korea and were able to reinforce the Koreans. However, because we were able to win the battle and siege the forts in the north, we were able to cut off the Koreans and the Oirat forces. However, in the south of China, Siam was sieging our forts. It was my belief that we could easily take on Korea and Oirat's forces together. However, if Siam's army was able to link up with them or send them via boats, we would start losing. So before they got that idea and planned to do that, the idea here or strategy was to do a stab hit peace deal against Korea in order to annul his treaties with Oirat and Siam, then do a truce break war on Korea to eliminate him. Korea's navy was stronger than mine, so I'm not sure entirely why Siam had not begun ferrying his troops to the Korean peninsula, but that was just good for me. Korea did move his isolated troops in the south part of the Korean peninsula and ferried them to the north in order to be on the same side of Oirat and fight me on the fort and Dong. Siam's sieging of the south 
was causing me to lose some of my mandate growth, but they still had a long way to go before I was below 50 mandate. The Battle of Endong was won, and I was still sending stab hit peace deals to Korea. It was only a matter of time before Korea was forced out of this war. And like that, our first war was won, annulling the treaties that Korea had and isolating him from Oirat and from Siam. Before doing our next war against Korea, we developed our south side in order to reduce the devastation that Siam had caused. And then it was time to do a truce break war against Korea. We were expecting Korea to get other allies like Portugal, however, they were able to get Oirat to protect them by becoming their tribute, which was technically a rubric forcing Oirat to do a white peace. And in the end, no one helped Korea in this war, leading to a swift and easy victory for the Ming. You don't like my Pope tribute chat? What's wrong with it? We should influence it too. The Papal States tribute is one of the most blessed things of all time. Now we were waiting for the Oirat and Korea truces to finish so we can finish them. In Siam, we brokered a deal with them. This game led to one of the most interesting worlds that we had seen in the EU4 multiplayer game before, with some nations that we don't usually see do well doing pretty good. This Ross is looking very familiar, chat. The remnants of Korea had begun to get vultured by the Southeast Asians and by Norway in Mexico. Once our truce with Oirat was up, it was time to punish them for betraying us and we pushed into their mountains of Mongolia. However, I no longer wanted to be evil, and I offered Oirat a nice deal where he gives me one province, so I controlled all of the China region, and I can do one of my missions, and he becomes my tribute, which he accepted this offer. And with that, the plot to deal with Ming was officially over, and Ming was out on top. I can't believe, I can't believe that this Norway and Korean Samsung sweatshop, which was an ex-Korea subject, started a huge colonial war. A huge colonial war started as a ripple effect from me fighting Korea. Because then Korea released Samsung sweatshop, which caused Samsung sweatshop uh, to be decked on by Norway. Norway uh, and uh, Samsung sweatshop started fighting. Then Samsung Sweatshop allied Great Britain, which caused Norway to get an ally in Spain. What the heck, dude? The New World was hotly contested. The Ming Empire controlling large parts of Western North America, Sweden controlling North Canada, Great Britain controlling East North America and the Caribbeans, Mexico contested between Norway and Korea's remnants, and Spain holding all of South America. What will happen next? Figure out in the next part of this series where a great massive world war will be fought for control of the new world. Thank you patrons Amir, Chogos, RVR, Mason and Druska, GigaChad, Hassiam, Will, Henning Balmark, Zorovia, Hardbam, Fabulous Nail, Beyond, Tonix, Cole Karp, Johan Asklund, Deshaun Moore, Trevor Kosman. Thank you so much for directly supporting this channel. And if you would like to directly support this channel, check out my Patreon link in the description. You'll also get some cool perks on top of that. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.